So please state your name for the record. Sure. Rob Oliphant, R-O-B-O-L-I-P-H-A-N-T, Member of Parliament for Don Valley West mm -hmm. and Liberal candidate in the upcoming election. That's great. And tell me a little bit about your background, Rob. Tell me a little bit about yourself. So um, this is my fourth election. Mm -hmm. And I was first elected in 2008 um, and sat in opposition uh, during that uh, mm -hmm. uh, parliament. I was defeated in 2011 narrowly mm -hmm. and came back in 2015. Mm -hmm. So I've won two elections and one mm -hmm. I lost. Uh, before that, um, I began my career as an accountant mm -hmm. and did a business degree at U of T, mm -hmm. uh, St. George, and uh, worked for a couple of years as an accountant at Algoma Steel in Sault Ste. Marie. Mm -hmm. Um, that wasn't where I thought my heart was, and so I went out to uh, Vancouver, mm -hmm. to the Vancouver School of Theology at UBC, mm -hmm. uh, where I did a Master of Divinity degree, mm -hmm. and then in 1984 was ordained as a United Church minister, and served um, uh, really in the church from 1984 until um, 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you plan for Don Valley West? What are some of your campaign promises? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people in this area would be health care. So what do you have in mind for health care in Don Valley West? Yeah, I, what, one of those issues obviously in a federal election is that most of our issues are macro or bigger mm -hmm. than a particular riding. Mm -hmm. So um, with respect to Don Valley West itself, um, some of the issues are unique to our writing, but very few. Mm -hmm. um, probably unique to our writing uh, would be Sunnybrook Hospital, mm -hmm. uh, which is a major general hospital trauma center, as well as a research and teaching hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, I will continue to be working with them mm -hmm. on, on a number of projects um, mm -hmm. in ensuring that they they get, uh, mm -hmm. I would hope, more than their fair share of uh, funding for, um, mm -hmm. for research mm -hmm. and ongoing, uh, especially in the neurological area. Mm -hmm. um, that would follow up on my uh, work on the Alzheimer's and dementia mm -hmm. strategy that uh, was the bill that I co-sponsored mm -hmm. with Rob Nicholson uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in terms of health care, obviously, um, we have uh, all the same issues others have, mm -hmm. uh, fear of Doug Ford's cuts oh, yes. and what that's yes. going to do, uh, what the federal government can do to respond and what it can't do to respond. Mm -hmm. um, other part of the, the work I'd like to do is continue what I started in my last year, uh, which was working on mental health, particularly among youth, mm -hmm. uh, so youth mental health and addictions. Mm -hmm. Um, I started a project in my last year, which mm -hmm. I've not finished yet, and it included a mm -hmm. um, roundtable discussion with experts. Mm -hmm. It included a um, uh, forum with young people mm -hmm. and also a town hall, mm -hmm. and it eventually led to the writing of two fairly lengthy uh, briefs, one to the Minister of Health mm -hmm. and one to the Minister of Justice, mm -hmm. about taking steps to, to deal particularly with youth mental health and addictions. Mm -hmm. Um, which is is uh, a significant problem, and it it, it knows no economic um, uh, bounds except uh -huh. that uh, some wealthier people in our society are really uh, worried about their kids having access uh -huh. to drugs and. Um, uh -huh. Uh, their lives are being affected mm -hmm. uh, very adversely. Mm -hmm. So I'll circle back around to youth mental health uh, later. Uh, the main question, the next question that I have though, this is another question that matters a lot to people and also does involve young people. Uh, it's related to road safety within Don Valley West. So what will you do within Don Valley West to make our roads safer? Because a lot of parents that I've talked to have said, I don't feel like our roads are safe enough here in Don Valley West. So what can you do to make the roads safer in Don Valley West? Sure. So safety? most of those issues lie at the, the municipal level. The municipal uh, level. That's okay. the responsibility of City Council and the City mm -hmm. of Toronto to, mm -hmm. to deal with it. Secondarily, it would be at the provincial level with mm -hmm. the highways because 401 uh, mm -hmm. borders the top of the riding. Yeah. And Don Valley Parkway uh, just to the east mm -hmm. of the riding. Um, what I think our largest contribution on that is mm -hmm. our, our um, financial support for public mm -hmm. transit. Mm -hmm. So if we can get more people on public transit and keep public transit rolling, whether it's mm -hmm. buses, LRTs, subway, mm -hmm. a relief line, uh, refurnishing, redoing the subway mm -hmm. station at um, Young and Bloor, mm -hmm. uh, all of those things I think contribute to mm -hmm. getting more vehicles off the road. 
In terms of, of actual uh, traffic on roads, uh, speeding, um, uh, rolling stops, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, famous rolling stops where people actually oh, yes. don't come to a stop in this riding, I've noticed a lot mm -hmm. of. Um, that's not our area. That's we're not we're your simply area. not area, okay. able to do that. So our best contribution is in terms of infrastructure mm -hmm. and in terms of okay. uh, public transit. So speaking of infrastructure, uh, with more green energy coming into Canada, what are you going to do here in Don Valley West for green energy? What can you do to improve access to getting more green energy here in Don Valley West? I think again, um, there's not a riding specific mm -hmm. issue. Um, that would not be really a Don Valley West issue mm -hmm. as it would be a Ontario issue or a yeah. maybe a GTA issue. Um, what would the Liberal Party do to bring more green well, energy? We're forward? doing a number yeah. of things. Uh, we, we have uh, various invest, new investor grants that mm -hmm. we're, we're proposing as well as loans for entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, in green energy. And I think one of the biggest um, funds or source of funds will be with the 20 of the TMX and the, the mm -hmm. uh, um, ownership um, option that the uh, federal government took, all the profits from that mm -hmm. pipeline will be going to green technology. And so um, how that gets gets mm -hmm. laid out over the next four years, mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you, can't tell um, but it, it is certainly something that, mm -hmm. that is an opportunity. Uh, there are um, a number of entrepreneurs in Don Valley West I've, I've met with who mm -hmm. deal with solar energy mm -hmm. and a couple of wind en energy mm -hmm. uh, people. Their businesses are not in the riding, but mm -hmm. they're, um, um, they, they happen to live here, and so I've, mm -hmm. I've talked to them. And uh, they're looking for access through uh, trade agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, they're looking for access to sell to the U.S., mm -hmm. to Europe, to Asia Pacific, and finding ways that we take our, mm -hmm. our, our progressive trade agreements mm -hmm. And, um, and make sure that we have entrepreneurs in Canada, mm -hmm. Ontario, Toronto, mm -hmm. Don Valley West, um, being able to, to access those, uh, mm -hmm. those markets. Um, we'll always be a relatively small market compared to the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's something Canada can capitalize on mm -hmm. and we will we'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, even just, you know, as we've lowered the small business tax rate from 11% to 9%, mm -hmm. that encourages small businesses to engage in this. Mm -hmm. uh, large businesses, though, are also important as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that, that mm -hmm. is an unfolding uh, story mm -hmm. as over the next few years. Uh, so this comes to the next question about taxation. So within, uh, I know this, I know how you keep saying it's uh, just not a single writing issue, but it's a whole writing. What is the Liberal Party going to do in terms of taxes? That's another really big issue. Here in Toronto, everyone's about low taxes, but houses are so high. So what is your party going to do in terms of taxes and lowering housing prices to allow for more affordable housing? Yeah. So, so there's a couple <coughs> of different things there in that, back in that question. One is, 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 you know, the first thing we did as a government four years ago mm -hmm. was lower uh, income taxes on the middle class. Mm -hmm. And the Prime Minister said in this campaign, that'll be the first thing we do in the next mandate, again, mm -hmm. is lower taxes on the middle class. How much would you lower it by, for um, example? I have not heard that you amount. Not heard. Okay. I don't know. Have we heard that amount? Uh, I, I don't know whether there's an actual um, uh, amount that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not a, an across-the-board reduction like the Conservatives are promising. Mm -hmm. um, it will be a targeted reduction to mm -hmm. the middle class, um, and it's meant to, uh, to advance uh, mm -hmm. uh, people. I mean, Already, we, we think that the tax rates on, on the lowest income people mm -hmm. um, are, are probably fair and right. They're mm -hmm. very low, and you can earn a considerable amount before mm -hmm. federal tax kicks in. We can't adjust, obviously, provincial tax rates, which um, account for significant tax uh, mm -hmm. problems that people have faced. Um, but it, with respect to um, uh, housing affordability, and affordable housing, it's it's partly related to income, mm -hmm. and so we help with Canada Child Benefit. We help with uh, lowering income taxes mm -hmm. and and a variety of employment um, mm -hmm. uh, credits, which are, are quite important, I think, mm -hmm. in terms of of getting money into the, the pockets of Canadians. Mm -hmm. However, 
affordable housing and housing affordability is another part of that too on the on the yeah, other that's side why, on that's the actual cost side. So, have that question. You know, we raise we raise yeah. incomes of people. Um, we are we have a, a fifty five billion dollar project on affordable wow. housing, mm -hmm. and that is only in the first couple of years of, of mm -hmm. being instituted. So we will be building more affordable mm -hmm. housing over the whole mandate, mm -hmm. and it will be. Um, I uh, have focuses on, on people mm -hmm. with disabilities, on seniors, mm -hmm. on, on cultural communities, mm -hmm. on low-income areas of, of our country, and it, mm -hmm. it's going to keep unfolding. Mm -hmm. That's on affordable housing, and that's trying to get people shelter. Mm -hmm. In terms of housing affordability, uh, that's a much trickier question mm -hmm. because we're a, we're a free market party. We, we want to help shape the market, but... Um, we're not we don't interfere you with the market because eventually uh, the market will win so what we're trying to do is find ways to calm the market um to to uh, keep prices as low lower mm -hmm. than they might <coughs> normally be when you've got a artificially heightened mm -hmm. market um and you try to to do that without increasing demand at the same time because the prices go down mm -hmm. which then just put the prices mm -hmm. up again yeah. I mean you've got to do it very carefully so we're we're doing that in in several ways one is the proposed one percent tax speculative tax mm -hmm. on foreign buyers who uh, buy something in Canada mm -hmm. and we're trying to calm that market down mm -hmm. um, we still believe that the stress test is an important um, function so that people don't get over their head in debt and and money with low interest rates as they are right now it's very easy to borrow mm -hmm. but we've increased the stress test so that people don't get into mm -hmm. dangerous situations mm -hmm. and we've also um, expanded the program we started uh, last year or the year before mm -hmm. uh, where we take a, an equity interest mm -hmm. in uh, new homeowners purchases mm -hmm. so up to five percent I used to be up to about a half a million dollars. Now it's up to over eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So if someone buys a condo in that uh, price range, below say nine hundred thousand, um, the federal government takes a five percent equity owner equity um, stake in mm -hmm. it, and that lowers on average about a hundred dollars a month for uh, people mm -hmm. to buy a house. Um, and yet the taxpayer does well because if that price actually goes up as it's mm -hmm. expected to or even flattens, we've not lost that money. We mm -hmm. keep that ownership until the house is sold at some point. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come back to what you said about youth mental health. So what have you done yourself for youth mental health? And before I came in, I'm going to make this a double question because I don't have much time. Um, also within Don Valley West, we have the largest population of Muslims in Canada. So 13% of the riding, I believe, is of Muslim descent or they at are least. Muslim. Yeah, yeah, at I least. So what can you do to um, protect minority rights here in Don Valley West and then also with youth mental health? Because those two issues are... They relate. Sort of like, yeah, they I are. Mean, they do um, yeah. So on the mental health issue, we've already put in uh, significant investments across Canada in, mm -hmm. in mental health uh, to the provinces and territories as well as for long-term care for, for seniors. Mm -hmm. um, Healthcare delivery is still a provincial jurisdiction, so we're not able to um, dictate uh, everything the provinces do in that area. However, we have put money into uh, education, stigma, suicide prevention, mm -hmm. uh, those kinds of issues, as well as significant investments, and I can't remember the number right now, around for opioid um, uh, yes. abuse in Canada. And, uh, we are uh, we are committed to safe injection sites. We're committed to harm reduction, and we are committed to um, standing with people. Mm -hmm. I personally want to keep moving towards medicalization of this problem mm -hmm. instead of criminalization. Mm -hmm. I think essentially um, uh, drug overdoses and drug use and drug abuse is uh, primarily a medical problem. And I would like to be able to deal with it the way we've dealt with smoking mm -hmm. tobacco, for instance, mm -hmm. where we've been very successful at reducing mm -hmm. uh, smoking rates dramatically over the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't do that by making smoking tobacco illegal. We mm -hmm. control it and we educate and mm -hmm. we continue to remind people these are health issues. So mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. And that's what I heard loudly at my roundtable of experts. 
as well as at the youth forum mm -hmm. and in the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've advocated that already with the government. Mm -hmm. What I do next, I'm not sure. I mean, I need to do more study. I want to look at the mm -hmm. Portugal model, uh, which I think is quite interesting. I would like to, to keep pushing the government to um, uh, take further steps on that mm -hmm. um, and also recognize that uh, it's not one size fits all. You need a variety of tools mm -hmm. for people in different cultural, socioeconomic, mm -hmm. age groups and uh, finding ways to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So you need a high school program, you need a college and university program, a young working program, a program for the Muslim community, a program for uh, newcomers to the country, second, third generation, or maybe quite mm -hmm. different than people who are new to the country. Mm -hmm. And you also have to look at organized crime and uh, gangs, uh, which also contribute uh, to, yeah. to, the, to the problem. Because a lot of young people unfortunately join that because they're bored and they, they don't really have Well, they're bored, they join it, and they're, yeah. they're, they're abused, they're, they're vulnerable. Yeah. Um, but also, um, drugs fund it and fuel it. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if we don't do uh, continued jobs at giving the resources mm -hmm. to police departments across the country mm -hmm. uh, to deal with guns and, and gangs, mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to deal with the other problems mm -hmm. that are associated, mm -hmm. which have to do with human trafficking, which have to do with... Um, uh, vulnerable youth being mm -hmm. being uh, radicalized mm -hmm. and uh, uh, vulnerable youth being caught up in petty crime and then big crime mm -hmm. and then drug use and drug abuse. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question I have is sort of related to that. Um, so what about guns here in Don Valley West? What will your party do to prevent well, guns from getting into criminals? We've um, already in the last parliament uh, added uh, several uh, new measures to try to uh, reduce um, uh, guns and, and the, the number of guns and the use of guns in Canada and and find ways to prevent gun violence. Mm -hmm. And there are, Bill C-71 brought in several measures. Mm -hmm. In this election, we've actually brought out uh, several new things. And one mm -hmm. of them is the ban on the assault rifles, AR-15s particularly, but maybe not limited just to those where there are tens of thousands of them in Canada uh -huh. and they serve no purpose. Mm -hmm. They're not used for hunting, they're um, mm -hmm. not sports uh, mm -hmm. rifles, they're, they're military style assault rifles mm -hmm. and we don't need them in Canada. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll be, the process will be, they'll be bought back by mm -hmm. the government and, and banned. Uh, the, the other issue is um, uh, giving cities in the country the power to, to ban handguns in their, mm -hmm. in their city limits. And there'll be ammunition issues uh, with that as well. Um, that isn't as far as I would have mm -hmm. gone. I, uh, I'm, I am uh, on the record for saying that I don't think that we need handguns mm -hmm. and that that is something that I would be moving away from. They're mm -hmm. not, um, they're not, uh, um, they're not a right in Canada. They're, they're, they're at best a privilege. And mm -hmm. I think at, at some point we say we mm -hmm. need to get rid of handguns. Mm -hmm. um, what hard. about, let's say, responsible gun owners or let's mm -hmm. say lawful gun owners? Would the Liberal mm -hmm. Party be in favor of that? Yeah, or? they are. Uh, Liberal, okay. they, you know, the Liberal Party has been very clear around sports, um, uh, shooting and hunting mm -hmm. and uh, uh, all of that. Responsible fi firearms mm -hmm. owners absolutely have that, uh, that right. Mm -hmm. But we want to localize the decision about handguns and say, yeah. Um, if, if one municipality wants to get rid of them, mm -hmm. we, have, we have to find a legislative way mm -hmm. for them to be able to do that. Yeah. I know we don't have much time left, but the last question I have is related to some of your accomplishments in the past. So you were on the Committee for Assisted Dying, from what I understand. Right. So what would your party do to improve access for people who want a medically assisted suicide or, yeah. Yeah, um, I co-chaired that committee. We had a mm -hmm. joint special committee, which joint means House and Senate. So I was the House of Commons chair, mm -hmm. along with Senator Ogilvy, uh, Kelvin Ogilvy, who was the uh, Senate chair, co-chair. And um, we came up with a report. It was based on what we felt was the evidence, as mm -hmm. well as the, the um, instructions from the Supreme Court of Canada on the Carter decision. Mm -hmm. uh, the government came up with legislation which I felt personally fell short um, and restricted uh, medical assistance in dying, mm -hmm. uh, particularly around a phrase which had, uh, uh, I, I didn't understand the phrase, which was that death had to be in the reasonable, foresee reasonably foreseeable future, which mm -hmm. is not in the Supreme Court decision at all. 
And um, just two weeks ago, the uh, Quebec Superior Court struck down the law, or they're not able to, but as a provincial court, but they have um, found that the uh, the law is unconstitutional. It's not going to be, it would have been challenged, but uh, Prime Minister said he's not going to challenge it, that he's going to let that ruling stand, and mm -hmm. he's going to take the time in the next uh, parliament to uh, find wording in the legislation that, that mm -hmm. is constitutionally acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, I think assisted dying should be rare, should be um, uh, used in cases where people are in intolerable pain and have no possibility of having it um, remediated, mm -hmm. and um, it should be available. I don't think I will use it. Um, I think I'm going to complain right to the end, <laughs> but I also think I may be able to get to the end with courage if I know it's there as a mm -hmm. possibility. When I look at the statistics, it's mostly people with cancer, and it's mm -hmm. mostly fairly painful mm -hmm. deaths, and people have reached the end, and mm -hmm. they, they want it to be over, and I see it as a gift. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep doing that. Um, I also chaired the Public Safety and National Security Committee after that, mm -hmm. and we did a review of the whole national uh, security framework mm -hmm. in Canada mm -hmm. and recommended uh, many changes for the federal government, and about 70% of them they backed mm -hmm. it on, and I'm, I, I, that's a good record for a parliamentary committee. Mm -hmm. um, we could still continue on that road, but I want to watch how the, mm -hmm. the safeguards for uh, civil rights uh, mm -hmm. unfold and see how the mm -hmm. privacy concerns unfold. Um, mm -hmm. And that, but that was a good piece of work we did. Mm -hmm. We also did a bunch of work on post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. for emergency responders. I want to see how that unfolds in the next mm -hmm. little while. Um, and I also chaired the Immigration Committee um, in the last uh, uh, second half of the mandate. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some really important issues about how we encourage rural and remote immigration, how we encourage uh, immigration to uh, the Atlantic provinces, for instance, that want it, and certain sectors that need more workers. We have labor shortages in a variety of mm -hmm. industries and a, a variety of places. So I'm kind of interested in how we, mm -hmm. we work on that. Mm -hmm. And lastly, uh, my last job was as uh, Parliamentary Secretary uh, to Minister of Foreign Affairs, I was about to ask you for that, yeah, so about Canada's foreign policy and our immigration policy. What yeah. About that? yeah, and with our foreign policy, uh, we, will, we will push on with Canada's um, multilateral approach, mm -hmm. um, our commitment uh, always to, mm -hmm. um, uh, to the international rules-based order and following the rule of law, but, mm -hmm. but structures and treaties and commitments need to be kept. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the third part of that is, is always that um, we will stand for human rights and civil rights and find ways to do that. Mm -hmm. and we, we find niche areas to do that in. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are known now uh, particularly for our feminist foreign agenda. Mm -hmm. And that is um, making sure that women and girls um, have opportunities in countries that um, mm -hmm. could begin to approach what women and girls in Canada have. And so that is an agenda that I, I suspect we'll keep following. Okay, that's great. Um, I believe we're out of time now. Okay, well, thank you so much for letting me sit down.